Assalamu alaikum and good evening, dear physicians. Today, we have semi-finite session of lecture series organized by ECG Study Group. Today, our speaker is none other than Chaudhary Dr. Hafiz Hassan sir. Before the lecture, I'd like to request Professor Abdulwadi Chaudhary sir to say some words regarding Hafiz Hassan sir, and then we proceed for the program. Wadud sir. Uh, Dr. Tushar, I think it's superfluous to say, introduce Hafiz Bhai because we are so long together in this program. Anybody who is actually here knows about him. But I will ask the audience who is a newcomer, just listen to him and find out how a teacher can be wise as well as articulate, as well as funny, as well as entertaining. That's how education should be, both entertaining and illuminating. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Professor Chaudhary Hafiz Hassan presenting you with, with interesting EKG cases. Hafiz Bhai, the field is yours. Thank you. Uh, that was very nice. So 54 year old coming with palpitation. So sure. I tell, I have actually like, yeah. Sir, can you can you get uh, the full screen because it's coming uh, full screen is not coming. Yeah, so uh, I tell my uh, residents and fellows now that uh, uh, to simplify this. So this is a, a tachycardia, narrow complex, and uh, fifty-four year old uh, coming with palpitation, narrow complex tachycardia, but it is regular and the heart rate is in uh, 170, 180. Any, any suggestion, but I think we have less participants, so I'll move on. So this is the differential of narrow complex tachycardia. Can it be AVNRT, AVRT, ATL tachycardia, ATL flutter with, with a fixed block? Um, but the rate is too high, and we gave adenosine, and it resolved, and uh, we diagnosed this as AV nodal re-entry tachycardia. I will request the um, faculty to hold your question because I'm going to see, show you a few of this. 70 year old um, with uh, this rhythm. Uh, I usually look at this this way, that is it tachycardia or bradycardia? <laughs> it is, uh, regular or irregular, or is there any pattern in the way the relationship of the um, uh, P and the QRS? So um, here we are seeing sometimes it is progressing to longer PR and then drop, and sometimes it is two to one and drop. So what will be the diagnosis? Uh, sir, so as as you have yeah. already pointed out the P waves, so it it seems that uh, there is uh, to me it uh, seems to be uh, Mobis type on second degree hard block. That is yeah, it is Mobis one type one, and no need of pacemaker. And this is funny. Um, I'm just giving you some, uh, uh, what I call the appetizer, and then I'll bring, give you some cases. So these are the appetizers. Why the pacing spike so big? Yep. Sometimes we see the pacing spikes big in uh, temporary wear. And then this is the AV pace though. And this is the epicardial pacer wear following cabbage. So that's why this is big. Um, now, sometimes we get challenges with artifacts, how you're going to sort it out. Uh, and so the same thing, is it normal rate or abnormal rate, tachycardia or bradycardia? But I would request you that always, always measure the RR interval 
and find out a lead where it is little better than the other leads where there are more artifacts. Artifacts can be due to hypothermia, patient motion, the skin contact, could be, be Parkinson's, and then could be device therapy. Sometimes we see that in uh, devices from the heart failure. Here, you can look at the lead three that the P wave can be uh, identified. So this is basically um, sinus rhythm. Computer got fooled and it read it as atrial fibrillation. The reason I'm showing you, because if we don't confirm atrial fibrillation, we can be misguided because there are a lot of therapeutic implications and anxiety over this. So, and the best way to sort it out, just to get a clean EKG. But if the RR interval is regular, which is the case here, then you also make sure that you're not fooled by the computer reading. Now, what is the diagnosis here? 75 year old with cough, fever, congestion, and, uh, uh, and their heart rate, ventricular rate is magic number 148. And then B1, you can see the P wave very distinct. However, lead two, uh, in the rhythm lead, it looks like a little bit sawtooth appearance. So we called it a tail flutter, but you can give a differential with a tail tack. And uh, I don't know, Rafik Bhai, are you here? Uh, are you okay with the uh, a tail flutter here? Or yeah, a yeah, tail first, tack? Yeah, the other one is a tail flutter. Yeah. Sir, uh, Rafik, sir. Uh, Rafik, sir. Yes. Actor paper is selected. Uh, there's a question. Though uh, the lead two three IVF there is sort of appearance, but if you look at lead V one, the uh, morphology of the P are quite clear and distinct. So in case of uh, atrial fat, as you know, it's a macro reentry. So the Q, uh, apparent atrial activity is quite uh, wide, but here the V one uh, the P's are much more narrower and Clean cut. Can it happen? Yeah, with actual flutter in lead V1, you can find a discrete P wave. Um, that's not uncommon. Um, but if you look and at lead, lead two, it's very, very clear that this is flutter. Right. And then I'm not going into the details the typical flutter, a typical flutter, the clockwise, anti clockwise. Sometimes it can be confusing, but I give you a very general cardiology two cents that typical flutter using the if must and the right sided, but everything else is left sided, uh, atypical. And then clockwise anti clockwise is how the macro re entry get the depolarization. So this is interesting EKG for many reasons. Uh, 43 year old. Um, Okay, so 43 year old coming with this and the ER emergency room was concerned about STEMI. So what is your comment? Again, sir, if you follow your dictum or the, follow the dictum of ECG, the rate is uh, at around that 150 range. Okay. And uh, the ST segment that is uh, presumed to be elevated is not the typical ST elevation that we see in MI. Okay. So again, so, I go. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, a uh, couple of things, right? The tachycardia uh, and regular tachycardia. But if you look at the early depolarization, it is very narrow. So this is not uh, falls into like a uh, wide complex tachycardia is narrow complex. And if you look at lead one is, I think you can say that there is P wave and it's probably sinus tachycardia. The bigger challenge, and that can be explained by the patient's clinical context that 
fever and uh, immunocompromised host. Uh, and, but the bigger problem is that there is also this uh, ST elevation that is shoulder down ST elevation and sick patients in COVID time, we have seen, seen this time and again that the acidosis, hyperkalemia, hypoxia, pushing the ST segment and giving this mimic of, um, of uh, ST elevation. So this is not the typical, what do we call the type one ST elevation in mind. And pe people get worried and, and also can be fooled and then unnecessarily telling the family. And then, and I also told the ER that you are need to address the futility of care because of the metastatic brain, uh, breast cancer, patient is pretty sick, hypoxic, and then uh, 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 respiratory issues. Um, so we did not do anything. Um, what about hyperkalemia? Uh, we suspected potassium was 5.5 and the acidosis, uh, she died later on. So we did not do anything uh, for, for this patient. So now uh, the cases, 57-year-old, um, history of um, reflux presented with substernal chest pain and this EKG. This is, I was waiting. So, you know, in the restaurant in the US, Sometimes they call you uh, that uh, catch of the day. So that means the fish that is, they got on the day, they, they cook for you. Like, a, the, like the, the Hilsa restaurant in Bangladesh near the Padma Bridge. <laughs> so Padma Bridge is going to be yes and we're going to fresh cover that. The Ami would have to Islam last key. What is the weekend day? What is the weekend day? It is the weekend case. Friday night, um, it was a uh, chest pain. What to do? I, I'll be a posterior EKG. So inferior leads does not have any ST elevation. So will you call it a STEMI and take the cat lab or you'll call it non-STEMI and then do this cat on Monday? I'll be going for posterior lead. Mm -hmm. and actually, patient, patient has been having active chest pain, V1 through V3, the ST depression you see in slight upright T, that's highly suspicious for posterior ST, STEMI. So this is, uh, this is why, this is uh, what you got. So we put the leads V7, V8, V9. Uh, yes. Q is there. Mm -hmm. He's pushed to him, So, okay. But I also suspect there is RB infection. Okay. Inferior is isolated, posterior is rare. Probably three to 4% isolated, posterior. Uh, but um, the uh, posterior with inferior is not uncommon. Could be anywhere between 20 to 30%. And yes, it can be RV and hypotension can be a big problem. So, um, any, I should not ask this because Rovik Bhai will, will not like that we talk about angio, but uh, this is a common problem that don't be fooled by, by this because that was the CONAS branch, but the RCA. So, culprit. Mid RCA. But, but sometimes we get this algorithm for the EKG that RCA versus CERT. But if it is isolated posterior, then what is the culprit? So I'm going back, showing you this. And then. Now, what is the culprit?
So late in the, uh, in the injection for the circ, there is a dye seeking in the circ. And we, I knew that it is a posterior, isolated posterior, statistically speaking, more likely to go for the circ. And, uh, and, and we, we actually went for the circ and then uh, we opened the circ and then RCA is totally rent top grade three, full collateralized. So um, we did not do, go after this, but we, and then uh, we'll bring back and assess the LAD and then think about LAD RCA uh, cabbage versus just LAD PCI and, and take the collateral to the RCA or the uh, LAD and then a, a third setting we'll think about CTO of the RCA if there is significant ischemia in that territory. But for now, patient is doing okay with the intervention of the CERC. So two, three AVF ST elevation, and then the ST depression in the precordial leads. But when there is circumflex uh, involved, then we usually observe lead one AVL depression and V5, V6 usually not showing ST elevation. But when there is the uh, V5, V6 ST elevations and lead one and AVL, most likely RCA, and particularly if the ST elevation is noticeable in the, this is the algorithm. So ST elevation is more uh, uh, in lead three and lead one and AVL, if it is yes, then it is most likely RCA. Now, in this report, they said sensitivity and specificity, you look at the specificity, 71%. There is actually a Chinese study that looked with the criteria, the specificity fell further. So almost like toss up that what is the culprit? So EKG helps you for the culprit, but it is, it is not a really a Bible type rule book. Uh, but um, my, I care more about the clinical condition of the patient. Is the patient hypotensive? And is there a big RV infarct? Because prognostically RV infarct will make a difference because patient hypotension, RV infarct, patient may not uh, long-term do that well compared to just uh, without RV infarct. Okay, so- That's right. Uh, Hafiz, yeah. may, may, I, may I have a question here? Yeah. Because uh, these are the, you, you, you already have explained the specificity and, uh, um, and the sensitivity of the ECG for television, especially for LCX and RCA. That is there. But at the same time, it is true that when you will have a CTO RCA with range of grade three or grade two collaterals are there, and when you are seeing that acute occlusion of the LCX, so not all the time the ECGs will tell the same story here because some way, because sometimes you see even the LED is uh, getting occluded, but uh, you are seeing that the, in, uh, the, the elevation in the 2-3 AVF or subtotal occlusion or a little bit TME2 flow in the LED, but as there was CTO RCA or it's behaving like yeah. the inferior mind sometimes. So it's a mixture of the things and that's why the ECG is not much, that much sensitive for the, that one. And uh, because the collaterals, uh, I think is a factor here because these collaterals yeah. are not getting enough flow which they were getting before. And that's why it's a mixed up thing, isn't it? Yeah. So maybe the RCA and, and also the LCX actually, both can be involved here. We actually, uh, uh, that is actually Wadud's favorite thing that uh, if it is a wraparound LED versus CTO of the RCA, sometimes you see the EKG changes. And if you look at the study, uh, EKG studies, the sensitivity goes higher, but the specificity may fall, you know. But good thing is that, and this is I tell the fellows, you need to know the EKG and in the context of the EKG and clinical presentation, when there is a multi-vessel involvement, you need to figure out which one is the culprit. Because for example, if I went after that RCA without giving much thought, I probably would be spending you know, uh, CTO hours and not much help. Um, but, but I went after the CERC. It was difficult, but 
um, I used the, you know, the over the wire balloon and this, that, but it was okay. We, we patient is doing great, actually. I just rounded so, early and patient is doing fine. So a, this a, is another a, example. And yeah. a, another, a, another, another uh, just a tricky question is here. The very small question is here. You have told that if we, it were not a, not a stillivation or is a suspicious thing that whether you are not understanding whether it's a stillivation or not, or maybe the first CCG when you have shown without the posture, the right one, and then it's the non HTMI and you will, you will wait till Monday. Uh, but if it is a high risk patient with non HTMI, then why it is till Monday? That is also a class okay. one recommendation to go for the initial one. That's it. That's out of ECG. I'm asking that one. Okay. So by the way, that was a joke. They <laughs> Monday okay. because that that <laughs> that usually people do. They they usually try. This is a good point that you got on that comment. Uh, but that was a joke, um, Saidur, because <laughs> ongoing chest pain and ST depression, there is no such thing called cool off, chill out. It does not work that way. And Deepak Bhatt did this crusade. And then we have the uh, National Registry for uh, Myocardial Infarction that the longer you wait, it is actually bad. Um, so if you go within 48 hours, then it is better than waiting for too long. Now, thankfully, Deepak Bhatt did not do an analysis for within six hours. Then we would be all the time in the hospital. Um, but mm -hmm. because earlier is better, that's the whole theme. And, and by by the same token, How? if you look at the um, hot non STEMI or what we call the Brownwell's classification, where he, he says that. If the patient having ongoing pain, dynamic EKG changes, rising troponin, non-sustained BT, uh, decompensated heart failure, cardiogenic shock, those patients you don't wait. Absolutely, good point. Uh, I actually was making fun that uh, don't Habib wait for Habib Monday. Habib I meant. Yeah. Hmm. Hello. Hello, Saidurbai, the question that is raised First of all, it is ACS. First impression, it is acute coronary syndrome. After you confirm now, it is true posture avoid. Then next thought will come forward. It might be a case of non STMI. That's why he raised the question. I mean, cannot it is acute coronary syndrome, most likely true posture AMI. Into do the second thought, we should go for repeat ECG and posture extension. As a kid, that book, that project in a high by this time, top of the result, then I can make it. Obviously, primary say observation of the and now early invasive study is the It is approach to And if you if you leave it um, for next day, also not good because you fail to recognize the true posterior ST elevation in mind. If you look at the EKG, it is truly gives you a clue for true posture AMI, most likely than understood otherwise. Second thing, if you look at there is no anterior flow in LCX, but there is some retrograde flow in RCA. So it gives another clue that LCS is the culprit vessel. So finally, right. if you open it up, then it gives you a clue if hemodynamics improve, that definitely it is proven that it is the culprit vessels. Yeah, that is the final thing, like, like myocardial viability. You do the cabbage and the LV gets better, then you know that you are right. How about LV not getting better? Then you said, oops, I did a misfire. So right. if pain resolution may not happen, then you may need to go back if you did not get the culprit right. Um, but here is some clues, is that R wave is tall in V1, and then suddenly V1, TU is upright, and ST depression, these are clue that there may be a posterior. And if you then do what uh, Wadud was suggesting, that posterior leads V7, V8, V9, 
then your pickup rate will be high. Um, and usually, usually it is not a problem if you see the inferior is elevated, then you know that infra-posterior association is not that uncommon. But if it is isolated posterior, then it may be a problem. Somebody is saying, can it be myopericarditis? Uh, the question is it, is, it can be in the differential, but for myopericarditis, we don't have any other uh, clue that PR depression, AVRST elevation. And in myopericarditis, usually it is not that localized in V789. Um, localized pericarditis is pretty uncommon unless like trauma or post cabbage. Usually it is global. And um, I'd like to make a small, a small comment on that from a clinical experience that whenever you see slight ST abnormality, V1 to V3 leads, or, or up to it could be up to V4, and, and there's a clinical scenario there, please do be suspicious for posterior my at least, and, and try to do right, uh, you know, a posterior ECG, because otherwise this is the most common MI that we stem we miss. Uh, in clinical scenarios suggesting even minor ST abnormality, maybe not classic that we see depression. Do we repeat EKG like in 15 minutes, 30 minutes, it's ongoing chest pain. Highly, highly be suspicious for posterior yeah. mark. Thank you, Aris Bhai. Peter Keller, I can question answer to Aris Bhai. Okay. And, uh, I don't want to say another thing. STEMI, STEMI has two parts, ST elevation and MI part. And I have said this so many times, and I will continue to hammer it. The MI part is clinical. If the MI part, the clinical part is overwhelming, don't look at the EKG too much. On the other hand, if the EKG part is overwhelming, then look at the clinical part as that this oh, patient says it is epigastric belly pain. No, if the EKG is slam dunk inferior ST elevation, sometimes they may have nausea, vomiting, and some epigastric discomfort. It is RCA. So, the overwhelming evidence of EKG, good. Overwhelming uh, uh, symptoms, think about it. The rest is need to correlate. And that's why this whole session, the EKG basics and beyond, that's the beyond part. Now, this is a complex issue, but it is from yesterday. And I thank my um, fellow Dr. Chris Susu to get, put it together last night for me. So now, Rafiq Bhai, you know how I get the cases. So this was my case yesterday. So out of hospital, BV arrest, right? One shock. The return of circulation, but mentation obtained and little bit of respiratory problem. This is the EKG after the shock. Comment? In the ST elevation turned into widespread. ST elevation in the uh, precordial leads and also in lead one maybe, right? But what is worrisome is that probably sinus tachycardia. And sinus tachycardia is a bad thing following this. So patient is intubated uh, and uh, what, what to do next? Mentation obtained, downtime, the CPR time, more than 10 minutes. So what to do? You have a plus one recommendation for this patient to go for the cath, no doubt about it. Okay, so what in the class one recommendation, what in the assessment that would be less um, compelling to go to the cath lab, less compelling. Like you assess, the more the cardiogenic shock, the patient age more than 75, pH 6.9 or 7.1, high lactate, patient has malignancy and, and 
metastatic diseases. Uh, Hafiz, bhai, Hafiz, bhai, you are putting you are putting down the the, the, the <laughs> other uh, other uh, other things later. <laughs> then why you are asking this? No, no, because no. But when, down all what this. I'm saying, first of all, when there is the intubation and out of hospital cardiac arrest, the door to balloon time is not demanded. The patient also had a fall and has a uh, suboccipital area swollen, localized hematoma, and maybe one fracture. Um, so th that is the not scenario. And, and, and then mentation of tundid, that is not prohibitive because actually Ehsan uh, Bai from Delaware, uh, he published that in the STEMIS situation, you know, regardless of the mentation, you should go. For the non-ST elevation, maybe you can buy time. And now you know, recent publication with the non-STEMI, they, they said that you probably be better off evaluate further. Cardiogenic shock is a problem, particularly in the elderly, um, but that is a different thing. This patient did not have shock and blood gas was not bad. CPR, 10 minutes, and patient has history of previous coronary intervention stands in the past. And that's all we know from the wife. So what we did, we did a, uh, the story doesn't end here. The, we did a quick CT on the way to the um, cath lab and uh, CT was negative for intracranial bleed. I worry about interparenchymal bleed or subarachnoid hemorrhage, et cetera. Not like a little um, external hematoma because we give blood thinner and if there is an issue, we can tackle that. So this is what we found in the, um, in the anticipating problem, I went from the groin and then uh, you can see that uh, a vessel is missing, which is the LAD and the RCA. And it looks like there is RCA stand, RCA stand is patent. So now, and this is this comes brings back the question of EKG and how much importance you give to the EKG. We did a delayed panning. Okay, okay. So this is the echo. Uh, I mean, uh, LV gram. I'm going to show you the echo. Will you do? I mean, there is always this question about. Does the LV gram helps? By and large, uh, if there is a good ultrasound, I am okay, but I try to assess the EDP, particularly sick patients. That gives you a lot of information. And I have a very low th threshold for doing a quick right heart. And if it is a shock, then mandatory right heart. But, but I'm telling the, you- but that's at the expense of 30 or th 20 or 30 cc volume overload. Yeah, yeah. Kidney came out okay. So this was the contrast echo, right? Now uh, you can see that whole apex is out, rather dyskinetic as, as it is. So I did a quick EKG in the cat lab. So you saw the EKG before, and now LV, LV is uh, almost like a dyskinetic aneurysmal. And then you remember the EKG on presentation, and now the EKG uh, after the ventriculogram. So what, do, what to do now? <laughs> and then I have a question for Rovik Bai. The case is not done yet. <laughs> so no it, I, I was wondering that is it, what is the substrate for the BFIP? We don't know much, was he having pain? Was it like a so, and then that led to this or what? But it is very difficult for me to just say that this is LV aneurysm and he went into sustained BTVF and had a sudden cardiac death. Um, but that is a provocative uh, thinking, but the ST elevation was real, you know? And, and if you go back, I, I looked at this, um, Carefully, I went back, and that I also would request, uh, particularly those who are doing angiogram, um, like uh, not that long. There is no harm 
to go back and look at the angiogram again and again. Um, if you look at this view, you see that there is some suggestion for that the LAD territory, there is a, there is a dye seeking in the LAD. Um, so I, I, I am convinced that this is, the LAD is the culprit. So I did actually um, open the LAD. And I did the IVAS and et cetera. And then, uh, and then, um, Optimized uh, stent uh, inflation, which is probably one of the he reasons. Has a, he, has a, he has a previous stenting in LED, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we that's why we I did the um, IVAS and then up, uh, dilated more. And then uh, my question now, uh, my question now is that is that good enough? I don't know if he is here because it is uh, a primary VF. You take care of the uh, LED and then you call it a day, optimal medical therapy. Uh, he's still intubated, he's, his mentation is getting better. We are working on his uh, vent setting and we may be able to extubate, if not today, tomorrow. Um, although you know, he has a little bit of fever now. I have one question, a uh, question I have that, you know, uh, yeah. when I see the second EKG that you did in the cath lab, it's, all, it's queued yeah. out everywhere, right? The, in order to form uh, the, like total Q wave, it takes time. So what's the time frame when you had cardiac arrest? Uh, it was probably pretty quick that you did the heart cat uh, in between. Probably 45 minutes. Yeah, the my, after, main concern right the, now, the, the, the Q waves ambulance. that, yeah. So the Q wave, so there's old, uh, I think before the event happened where the patient has already aneurysm there, uh, uh, you know, because the, uh, it's already, Q have already formed there. So it, it has to be like 36 hours around like uh, 48 to 36 hours that we see normally total Q wave form and persistent so ST elevation. So the, so the Q wave, um, <laughs> the Q wave part, I, let me. Uh, yeah, I can do the so first one. So look at the first one, right? Do uh -huh. you think there is Q wave in the first one? V1 to V3. Yeah, there is Q wave. Mm -hmm. So it is a, the, it is but not a it, new Q. ST elevation is disproportionate. It like, looks like acute. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, so do not have that type of a elevation. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that I normally, if the ST segment get better, then you think, oh, is there any reperfusion happen? But I have the angiogram, I have the ventric ventriculogram, and I have mm -hmm. the repeat EKG. Actually, the ST segment got better, actually mm -hmm. made me worried that this is not LV aneurysm. Because the, if it is LV aneurysm, it will be persistent. With mm -hmm. the but but happens that, that, happens that the first EKG was in, uh, in a tachycardic state. And that's, the second it, one is in a is in a in a normal sinus state and and in a, in a normal. So uh, in a tachycardic stage, in these sort of patients where the previous MI is there, and within forty five minutes he has come, and uh, and by this forty five minutes, patient has in cardiac arrest only for the occlusion of the LED may not be. It may be the arrhythmogenic scarring uh, scars uh, there. In the in, in the LED territory, it, it may happen also. It it may be one of the okay. causes. Okay, so I don't know if everybody followed what you said, but I'm just telling, reemphasizing what you are saying. Post cardiac arrest or in an acute cardiac event, the tachycardia and the double product, like the heart rate and afterload high, can give you dyskinetic segment worse and make the ST segment worse looking. Mm -hmm. When all these settle, yes, that yes. may got better. And But what is important here, that the better means that it is not LV aneurysm alone that can explain this. So I thought that there may be some ish reason that mm -hmm. I should go after. And the die seeking, the acuteness, all these, it is difficult for me not to open the artery. And How much time you needed to open the artery? How much time? Yeah. Was it Maybe difficult to open the artery? 
yeah, I had to go with the over the wire balloon and cross a couple of wires, but we got it reasonably good. You know, our average time, because we've maintained the record. So no, I'm thinking that whether it is softish, softish plaques were right there or it was really something like no, the, after the occluder segment. After the occluder segment, I had to cross, yeah. Oh. So that's probably the reason why it closed. But overall, maybe 35, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, but the next sketch, which I'm not showing, was an RCA that took me about two hours for four stands. But anyway, my question to Rafik Bhai, I don't know Rafik Bhai is here. Is it okay to call it a day and not put an ICD? Or you still think that we should put an ICD? If the patient wakes up and there is a meaningful recovery, then before going home, uh, will you be okay? Should you not wait for some time, 40 days before you decide? That is otherwise cases, but this case already had a previous uh, MI. We have uh, previous, yeah, exactly. And the question so, right now that that fundamental question comes here. The same question that if you think that VFib arrest happened with acute event, acute occlusive event, then you have to wait. If you think that the VFib happened from the scar then you need to put it. That's the fundamental question we need to answer here. That's why I have asked this question. Yes. <laughs> so I have asked this question. So I gave you all the data. What is your answer? <laughs> Very difficult. <laughs> so Obviously, there is a gray I zone here. There is a gray zone here. So, so we have to yeah. wait and see. I yeah. think we can wait. At least, at least we can. If you have a high suspicion, uh, at least you can do the vest for now yeah. and see yes. and how he does. That would be my answer. So I'm thinking about uh, that. That at least we give a light vest. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a wearable jacket for uh, sustained VTVF um, as a protection. But and and we are calling it uh, VF with the MI. Then I think there is justification. But for secondary VF. Uh, secondary sure. prevention, the life vest is not the recommendation, then mm -hmm. ICD is the recommendation. But I'm going to show the next case and then maybe we'll call it a day. Um, this is a, this is, everybody agrees that this is tachycardia, white complex tachycardia? Yeah. And question is, is it VT or is it SVT with aberration? or paste or, or the differential of white, white complex tachycardia. So this patient had sustained, then shocked, and this is the story. 22 year old and has myotonic dystrophy. And then gave MEO, QT was a little bit prolonged, but after this patient went into a uh, VT storm refractory VT, mm -hmm. shot, amio. Then we became a headless chicken, lidocaine. And this is the echo on the 22 year old. So RV is not dilated, LV clearly is significantly decreased. So what, what is the plan? So there is a good review. If anybody wants to, Arbustin is, is the car, cardiomyopathy guru. You know, he describes this morphological classification of cardiomyopathy, dilated, hypertrophic, restrictive, and then others. And that also includes myotonic dystrophy, usually gives dilated cardiomyopathy. And there is a, um, a variety of clinical manifestations and the prognosis can be bad. And uh, the, in the EP world, this is the way they think that the triggers, the mediators and how the, the substrate is going on and the, how you can address this and maybe have some impact in some cases in the remodeling of the ventricle and get the ventricle better. 
Um, but for the sake of time, I wanted to tell you that what we did in our patient, let me show you the EKG. Any, oh, what is that? Okay, yes, so sir. any idea that what, what kind of VT it is? So uh, like any refractory VT, you know, in the adult world, we worry about scar, aneurysm, um, pseudo aneurysm is also vulnerable, but uh, it can be a sustained refractory VT and it may not work uh, with the uh, antiarrhythmic shock. And then if the patient has ICD, it can really drain the generator the, with this repeated shock from the ICD. So it is important to address the VT and, uh, and then go after the VT substrate and, 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 and look for uh, scope for uh, VT ablation. So um, um, looks like Rovigbay has left, but we thought this is right bundle left axis, looks like fascicular VT. It is one type of fascicular VT. And then uh, we put impella because the patient had also heart failure and then give the LV support. And they took about three and a half hours to ablate the VT and uh, patient is doing okay. Now uh, we are thinking about putting an ICD because in case, but the patient is having some fever, pneumonia uh, extubated and then we'll see whether we can put an ICD and then think about um, further evaluation for the cardiomyopathy. So I will stop there if any questions. Sir, was there before the EP study or radiofrequency ablation, did you try for a sympathetic denervation, which was, uh, which might be easier in that case? Which one? Sympathetic denervation. Oh, sympathetic denervation is not easy um, because it is a cervical ganglia. The uh, Dr. Shiv Kumar from UCLA, and I have worked with him, and I have sent a couple of my patients, and they have done it, and he has published as well. But it is not that easy, and uh, he he will probably tell you that same thing that uh, they they will go after if they have issue, um, if, um, if the uh, initial ablation fail, you will not go to um, cervical denervation, sympathetic denervation first. And, but good uh, point. Uh, yeah, but, but fascicular VT probably would be relatively not that difficult to ablate, ablate because if you can find this uh, you know, circuitry in that yes. area, uh, it, it would be not that difficult, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In case of fascicular VT, that uh, uh, ablation is, uh, in fact, not quite uh, hard. Mm -hmm. uh, but considering the substrate and the mitral dystrophy, it is unusual to be fascicular VT. Moreover, that the morphology of the ECG doesn't uh, fit the typical picture of fascicular VT in this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, so uh, if anybody goes around the fascicular region. Yeah, I that think you're right uh, that in a way that the substrate and LV dysfunction is still there. So is the ablation foolproof? It is not like RVOT, tachycardia and, and VT and then you ablate, you don't put an ICD here, you are not totally immune. So we'll have to protect and therefore yeah. giving ICD. Um, anybody interested, I would request to read the uh, uh, fascicular VT and circulation and give a search, you will get this paper really nice. They describe about three types of fascicular VT, the natural history and prognosis and uh, different therapeutic uh, modalities. <laughs> all right, thank you, thank you all. Uh, what it, sir? Uh, I would like to request Professor Abdullah Chaudhary, sir. No, uh, Jamin Bhai, will you make some comment? Jamin Bhai is here. Yes, sir. Jamin Bhai? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, 
actually always i learn new things from hafiz uh, lectures mm. the his hafiz kind of speeches are excellent and, uh, all our uh, teaching form of ecg very interesting uh, thank you hafiz bhai thank you thank you it is always a privilege खुबी ओतप्रोत भाव जड़ित अनेक समय अनेक सहयोगता लागे नहीं मैनेज कर प्रश्न छो शुदू आज के जो गो प्रेजेंटेशन आनी कर आसान सर के जिज्ञेस कर मेल एक जन शुद्ध फिमेल तेताल बस वयस्क तो आसले इन्सिडेंस टाइम ये फ्राइडे <laughs> थैंक <laughs> फिमेल हॉस्पिटल सो हि Father Sir, I request you to sum up the presentation as as the normal presentation. Of... Yeah. Uh, very crisp presentation. Next key, sir. Next key, sir. We go to the other next key. Thank you, sir. Our next presentation is twenty seventh of this month, and uh, the topic is normal ECG in children. Our our age group is normal ECG in adult. कमिंग दिस मान्थ 
আমার Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.